Welcome to this lesson from Launch Code. This is LC101 Unit 2, and this continues our exploration of storing objects in relational databases using object relational mapping tools, and in particular, in this case, using the Flask SQL Alchemy module that is available to connect our Flask applications to a database and to ferry objects in and out of the database uh, via Python code. In the last few lessons, we looked at how we could store tasks in our Get It Done Task Manager application. We looked at how we could create tasks and then cross those tasks off and mark them as completed. And that was um, interesting from several perspectives. In, 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 in particular, we learned how we could store objects in a database. We were never able to do that before, but we were still lacking in some functionality in that there are no users of our system. There's only one basic master list of tasks. People can't own tasks on their own, and there's not even, in fact, a concept of a user within our application yet. So these next few lessons will fix that. We're going to introduce how we can um, basically set up user accounts on our application and then set up relationships between users and their tasks. So to get started, I'm just in my project directory here, get it done. Um, so um, cut along with me here as you, as you go. And the first thing I'm going to do is to activate my virtual environment. Okay, and uh, then I'm going to open up my project in Visual Studio Code. And I've actually added a couple of things here between the last time we, we worked together and now. So let me show you exactly what those are. I'm going to go to my terminal here and just do a get status. And you'll see precisely the two files that were added, templates.login or templates slash login.html rather, and templates register.html. So these two template files are Jinja templates that are uh, that are now in my project, and basically they're structurally almost identical to what we built in the user signup um, assignment. So uh, I brought them over here, I copy pasted and modified them very slightly. I'll put links to specific places where you can grab these files to go pull them down and to copy them into your project. Those will be on the video lesson page. Um, but they're pretty much the same thing we did in user signup. The notable exceptions to that, uh, the things that I changed here, I changed the paths to match what we might want for our application. The register form uh, will post to slash register. The login form will post to slash login. Additionally, our login and registration use email as the username. So there's not a separate username and email in this particular case. It's a common paradigm for websites to use email as your login identifier rather than uh, a separate username. And so we only have an email field here in the registration form and then we require an email, email field when users log in. And then the other thing that I've done, which we'll resolve later on, is I've taken out, uh, there used to be some divs here that, that were for error reporting. I've removed those from the form. In the next series of lessons, we're gonna introduce a new way of displaying messages to users uh, that will replace that somewhat more manual approach of inserting error messages uh, very explicitly in different places within our, our pages. Okay, so those are those two templates which are new. And just to get started here, just as some warm up, I'm going to write a couple of small handlers that can render those templates and we'll just go see what they look like. So the first thing I wanna do is create a handler to render a login template. So let's make an app.route configuration to slash login. And for now, we just wanna render it so it can just be a, uh, a get request handler. we can return render template login.html. Okay. And then we want to do the same thing just to display the registration template. Okay. So I just added those two handlers to display the templates of those two paths just to see what they look like and to get uh, some some working code before we go any farther. So let's run the application. All right, and it looks like I uh, forgot to, I copied and pasted there and forgot to rename this function there. So that's uh, my mistake. Let's rename that. So now our register function is actually called register as opposed to having that duplicated function name. All right, there we go, we're running. And let's see, I'm going to go to my browser, go to localhost colon 5000 and refresh. 
Okay, so this error is something that you will, will likely see at some point if you haven't already. Can't connect to MySQL server on localhost. Once we start working with databases, uh, we're working with basically two separate systems. We have a running application that runs Python code that exists um, in its own in its own uh, process space. And then there's a MySQL database running on our, on our uh, laptops as well. And that's an independent application. So um, as, as I just did here, this is something that you are likely to frequently do. Not a big deal. Basically, um, there are any number of things that could cause this can't connect to MySQL server. The main one, which is the case here, is that I haven't actually started it up. So uh, this is just a gentle reminder to say, hey, go ahead and go start your, your database. Okay, I'll leave that open for a second. We're going to need to look at the database uh, pretty soon. But if I come back here now and refresh, now I'm okay. So let's check out those two templates that we just added. Let's go to the login. All right, that looks pretty good. Have a nice descriptive header here. I have an email and a password field and a login button. I'm not going to try to submit this yet because there's no handler there to catch that request. And then if I go to the register form, I have something similar. And that all looks good. So those are the forms we have to work with on the front end. Uh, a lot of our work is going to be um, spent in setting up how those uh, requests are handled when a user submits the register or login form. So let's go back here and do some of that work. I'm going to go ahead and kill my application, control C. I'm going to go back into my main.py file. And up at the top, just below task, uh, the last kind of piece of setup I want to do here before we dive into working with login and register is to go ahead and create my model for my user class. So uh, my user class model, I should say. So we'll come up here and we'll declare a new class, user, that extends as with our task class, db.model. And uh, I want this is going to have some, some things in common with task. In particular, I need a primary key on this object as well, or on uh, instances of this object as well. So let's make an ID equals db.column. And that's going to be an integer column with primary key equals true. OK. Then for the user, well, think, if we think about what properties our users should have, they definitely need an email and a password, right? So let's set those two up. That, uh, the db.column, um, for this, the data type of that column should be a string. And 120 is pretty healthy there. That doesn't necessarily need to uh, be that long, but we'll go ahead and give it that much space. The other thing about this email and about our users in our system is that we shouldn't allow two different user accounts for the same email. So I can add a flag to this column that says unique equals true, and that will have uh, when, when uh, SQL Alchemy goes to create the table for my user objects, it'll put a restriction on that column to make sure that there are, um, it's not possible to add two different records with the same email. And then I need password equals db.column, uh, db.string. Again, 120 is pretty healthy there, but that's fine. And those are the three, uh, three fields that I need for my user object. We'll add some others as we go. Those uh, are the bare minimum what I need here to get going. All right, let's go ahead and add an initializer or a constructor for the user class. And our, our users uh, should always have emails and passwords, so we'll add those two parameters to our constructor. Self.email equals email, and self.password equals password. Okay, great. Now let's go into our Python shell and uh, go ahead and, and uh, create the user table and create at least one user object for us to work with. So I can fire up the Python shell by just running Python with no file argument at the command line. And then um, as we did in previous lessons, I can say from main, from my main file or from my main module, import db and user. Okay, and we made a new user class, but that did not actually make any changes to the database. Let's just go show you explicitly uh, what, what our database looks like right now. I'll go to phpMyAdmin. And if I go to the get it done database, 
I'll see that I only have one table still. There's only the task table in place there. So there's no user table, even though I added that user model. As before, in order for that table to be generated, I need to tell SQL Alchemy or Flask SQL Alchemy that I want it to, to do so. So uh, we can say db.createAll. Oh, pardon me. There we go, create all. And that should go ahead and generate the table. We see that we got uh, create table user with all of those columns. That command was logged here. And if I come back and just check it out, see that I now have a user table. Let's look at that table and see what it looks like. And its structure is that it has three columns, an ID column, that's a primary key, an email column, that is unique, and uh, a password column. Okay, so that's pretty good. We're ready to go. So back in my Python shell, let's go ahead and create our first user object. And so I can do this just by calling the user constructor. And I'll create a user for myself. And a password. All right, and then I want to store this user in the database using commands we've used previously, db.session.add to add the user to the session and then db.session.commit. Okay, and we see as is logged, there is an insert command that was run against the database with the values that uh, we gave it when we initialized our user objects. Let's go check out the database and make sure the data is there and see what it looks like. Okay, we see now we have one row in our database. The, the ID column was populated for us since it's the, the primary key ID um, as configured in our Python file, and I have email and password. Notice here that my password is just sitting there in plain text, and it's sort of pretty much uh, laid bare for everybody to see. That's generally not a good practice to just store passwords um, in plain text, um, not obfuscated or encrypted in any way. We're going to learn in a later lesson how to securely store passwords in a database. For now, though, we're going to just be naive about it and store our passwords in plain text. We'll come back and fix that in a future lesson. All right, so that's great. So now we have we have a user model class. We have login and registration forms. We actually have a user in our database. In the next lesson, we're going to look at how we can work with users using those login and registration forms.